Hey guys, uh, this is Nils Hoffmann. Um, my remix for Crooked Colors is out today. Um, of the, uh, the original track is called Falling. And yeah, it's a really nice orig original song. It was great to have remixed that one. And yeah, I want to show you a little bit today of what I'm doing, uh, how I process my uh, groups and everything and my scents because that's really important for me. And yeah, we will just start basically with um, my scents uh, that I always use. I have four um, reverb uh, scents. I have, a, have uh, in different sizes. I have a hall reverb uh, where I like mostly use the Valhalla vintage verb. Um, yeah, just a concert hall that is like around 3.84 seconds long. Um, I always look um, after that the decay time is matching with the BPM. So you can also calculate this online. There are websites that help you with that. So you can exactly uh, have the right decay time, which is like uh, super helpful. It just feels right, you know, because it's synced to the tempo. Um, then I have a plate um, where I use, in this case, the EMT 140. And I decided to use um, the A channel here, uh, the, the A one, uh, the A type. And it's also like around two um, seconds long. So it's kind of a long plate reverb and yeah I, I really like the sound of it because it's so bright and yeah it's i also really like the the other one from uad which is also um i think an emt um rebuild i think it's called yeah it's, it's the emt 250 that's also the one that i really like to use but this is more for darker stuff um yeah, so I also have a small plate, and yeah, there I use the <laughs> EMT 250. Um, yeah, it's just one uh, second long, and yeah. Then I also uh, used an ambience on one return scent, which is the Seventh Heaven. It's just a, it's a modulation. It's modeled after the Ricasti uh, re reverb. I think it's called M M7, and it's just crazy good. And you can like, it's a cinematic. It's like a, uh, you know, that you, you really can replace everything that you want to replace. You know, you can. It's uh, you have so much uh, opportunities here, and it sounds really really good it's like my favorite uh uh delay uh, my, my 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 favorite reverb for uh, those kind of situations where you really want to have it clean and super tight and perfect and not just a plate like an emt that's more like rough and you know where you can't really like type in like the, the right uh, decay times and everything sometimes you also want to have that kind of mistakes in your sound you know uh, another thing that I really like to use is uh, a parallel compression channel that's super important for me. Uh, I sent my whole drum bus uh, through it and I really like the, uh, the UAD uh, Xena limiter for this. Um, I, oh, I think I always use like the Joe Ciccarelli preset which is called, I think just, it's just called something like parallel drum bus compression also so really easy one and it just works i think it gives it a really nice tone and color to it so um yeah really like that one um another one is uh the glue compressor by uad which is um modeled after an ssl compressor an ssl bus compressor um and yeah I always use that one of uh, to uh, glue my kick drum and my bass uh, together because um, I think it really makes it more thick 
to uh, compress your bass drum and your um, kick drum separately and uh, like yeah mix it in with the original sound and I don't do a lot you know it's it's really yeah it's, it's really um, like subtle compression you know like minus my minus three or four db and um yeah so that's that and yeah then i have a channel where i which is called add mono where i can just send a sound to this channel sometimes to make it to give it like a copy that is mono and you can like yeah like mix it in with the original signal sometimes that ha that's helpful if you want to um, uh, have it cutting through like more on a smaller system which are usually mono or like m more in the club but uh, it's also not that often that I use it and I have a stereo widener uh, that I normally use but not here, not here. I f like sometimes I, I use the ozone here but I didn't use it here and I didn't even recognize <laughs> that I didn't, I, you know, I, it's not every time that I use it, but uh, I usually use it for hi-hats and just boost one exact frequency. Uh, I have a tape saturation pl plugin on, um, on, on a stand where I uh, really like to take the Studer A800. A um, I use that one for like the gluing stuff and the other one from UAD, I think it's called, what was it called again? Ampex ATR. Uh, that one's like more for individual sounds. And um, yeah, also here, I think I use a preset that's somewhat called, I don't know, what was it called? Like drum bus tape saturation or so. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, I used the saturated, uh, yeah just to give it a little bit more saturation, especially because I don't do that much processing in my hi-hats. I usually I only tune them and uh, EQ them a little bit and sidechain them and give a little bit of rework, reverb to them. So, but I don't have that much color and basically it's for that and also to glue it in with the, uh, like, yeah, just to drum the other drum sounds, you know? Uh, then we are going to my valve saturation send where I have the UAD culture vulture and this one is my absolute favorite uh, plugin of everything that I have it because it sounds so good it's like uh, also on my list to get a to get a um, analog one uh, maybe in the next month because I really like it and um, yeah so it's basically um, like valve saturation. You have tubes in here digitally, but, but they sound really, really good. And I use this, especially in the music group on all my um, synthesizers, strings, uh, pads, keys, whatever, I always use that. Because just even if you just um, like uh, dial it in a little bit, you know, it gives this kind of, um, yeah, like a, it, it just crunches them a little bit, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it warms them up and even a tiny amount is like always making the sound better. So I use this <laughs> basically on every channel uh, in, in the music group, but uh, not on vocals, sometimes on bass, but not really. My basses are usually don't have that much high frequency information. so. It doesn't really make sense to, to do it, but I could, you could also do it there. I mean, it depends on what you are doing and what you like and everything. Um, what else do I have? I have a, de like a longer delay. Um, you know, with, uh, I really like the Echo Boy. Like all the sound size plugins are um, great. Uh, I think I use mostly the Echo Boy and the Crystallizer. With a Crystallizer, you can like do lots of um yeah lots of detailed stuff and also in this track uh, if you uh probably listen to one of these uh, vocal um pitches that i did for example in the first half you know there's a part where i think it's like where 
the words like can't help playing get uh, repeated and this does the crystallizer which pitches it up and throws a delay on it and which makes this kind of cool effect which I totally love you know I love, love the crystallizer but I also love the echo boy uh, which is like yeah the best delay plugin the best echo plugin that I know it sounds amazing yeah what else to say you know it's just it has long notes um, and I have a short delay where I really like to use the primal tap also from sound toys um, yeah which has a decay time that's fairly short and so that you have like a little bit of possibilities sometimes you want to use it on something but I'm actually not really using them a lot but sometimes it's good to have the opportunity to do it and yeah you could also like exchange the primal tap through the echo boy but the, the primal tap has like I think it has a sound that the Echo Boy doesn't really can do. So that's why I use it here. But I mean, like, yeah, I think there you also could probably choose the crystallizer. But those three Echo plugins are totally doing the job for me. And yeah, that's what I like to use on my uh, sense. And now I want to show you like what I did on the vocal group. Um, like I, on the vocal group, I have, first of all, like everything that I do is like processed individually. So I uh, have like lots of subgroups here, like a drive, like the main vocal, which is called drive vocal here, which is like a bit confusing maybe. And like I have a delay group and an effects group, for example, if you have a Vox riser, you know, where you just uh, throw reverb on, the vocal sound and then freeze it and reverb it and then put another <laughs> uh, crystallizer on it or something and uh, yeah just serve a lot of stuff there and like those kind of subgroups I run through a fair chart which is um, yeah like a very, exp a very expensive compressor but the uh, plugin version is also amazing and um, yeah just to give it more just to, I, I, I use all the bus compression or um, processing to always like glue all the sounds together and give them more um, tone, more character, which is and which is always the goal, you know. And this one, the Fairchild, it just does it great for me on vocals, and I don't really use it a, a lot when I'm like processing my main vocal there, I always use like in a, just in 1176 in LA2A, which is totally enough and maybe so, and yeah, of course, some EQing and reverb and everything. And if maybe even a pull tag or like a mark EQ for some air, but yeah, not that's always depends on the material, of course. And yeah, what else we got? We have, um, the um, on the music group we have an, an SPL twin tube which is which I sometimes use but not always um, mostly I use the UAD um, Chandler curve bender to uh, it's, it's kind of a mastering cue and first of all it has a great tone you know so that's what I like about it in first place and what I even like more about it is that I can like EQ some frequencies out, for example, where the mutt is at around 300 hertz, you know, uh, just EQ it out like half of a dB and uh, I also boosted something at 800 dB, dB and uh, maybe at uh, 3.6 because this is where the vocal sits, I just cut it out a little bit of there to give the vocal more room, you know, it's just all it all makes kind of sense what you're doing and yeah uh and at 8.1 even i boosted in 1 db like to give it more uh air more room more ambience um and yeah that's it and this is already something that glues it in uh quite glues all together quite nicely and yeah you can I would also suggest to do like subtle movements and yeah on the bass group I don't really have something this time because like if you 
compress, for example, a, a vo like a a bass like too much, it a lot of low information uh, gets lost because like compre compression always reduces the low end and you want to have some low end in the bass. So this is why I do like very, very little uh, compression on bass lines. And I also do no um, compression on or like processing on the bass group, but I send it to the SSL uh, compressor. So this is what, what I'm doing and which also gives a little bit of character and you just, I, I just process, process them like quite nicely uh, on its, on their own. And there are like not many, uh, many sounds. It's just like basically two sounds here and another one that brings in more noise. Um, yeah, so it's, there, there's not that much to, uh, which you can glue together. So that's like fine. And on the drum group, I used like I ba <laughs> I used my old uh, drum group processing uh, here accidentally, which but it sounded so nice that I let it that I left it on. It's like an S an SPL twin, um, like a limiter that's not really cutting out anything. It's just there. Uh, I forgot to delete it, and like the Kramer Pi, uh, which I used back then. But now I mainly use the um, I used the UAD API uh, 2500, just, uh, I think it's just like a fairly low attack so that the transients are passing through and like a short, uh, well, a fast delay time like to, that you only like catch the transients and re reduce them like, compress them like just a little bit, you know, this, so th that the transients come out, um, a little more a little bit more from everything and it also has like a nice tone which um, yeah just glues it together like this this is the the purpose of all this uh, bus processing I also you could also or well I sometimes I also do subgroup processing with the vertigo which is also an amazing processor I, I have it uh, an amazing compressor I also have it here by default but I I have, didn't really like it here, so I just muted it, same as on the hi-hat group or uh, on the snare group. Um, you could also do that. Um, but in this case, I didn't like it, and yeah. So um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video here, and uh, maybe you could learn something or uh, also want to build your Ableton uh, template that's like already set up with your right uh, return tracks and everything and yeah i hope you enjoyed it and uh, you are also enjoying the new remix i did for crew colors and yeah hope to see you soon bye bye